Well, I have with me in the studio the Director General, uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, uh, in the person of Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kadir. Many thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. Well, let, let me start this way. Let's look at the, the, the Continental Trade Agreement itself. What does it really entail? What do we intend to really achieve? Many say there are lots of positives with regards to this agreement. Yes, thank you very much for having me on your program. I think straight away the AFCFTA is actually an attempt by Africa to trade among ourselves. Uh, Intra-African trade is very low, much lower than 10%. So we trade with outsiders more than we trade with ourselves. So essentially the AFCFTA is meant to make us have progress along the line of trading among ourselves, cutting down trade barriers, and generally improving the economy of Africa by this trade exchange. So, so why is Nigeria not um, a signatory to it at the moment? Well, I think there are quite a number of reasons. And, and I think our president acted in the best interest of the country not mm -hmm. to sign as at yet, uh, because the necessary consultations uh, within the country had not been done before the uh, advice was given that we should go ahead to sign. sign. We said, for instance, that stakeholders that would be negatively or positively impacted by the agreement had not been consulted adequately. Their positions have not been taken into consideration. And the fact that we didn't even have objective basis for determining to go to sign. For instance, there was no study that was done to determine the impact, the possible impact of the agreement. There are basic uh, components of an agreement, that you, a trade agreement of this nature, that you, accept, I, you expect to have been known and adopted and accepted by all the stakeholders before you go ahead to sign. So there are quite a number of reasons. <laughs> really a number. Now, for manufacturers who are active players when it comes to producing all of this, you know, in-house Nigerian-made products, how will this not affect them positively? What are the challenges that won't make them make this affect them make positively impact on their businesses yeah basically a trade agreement is give and take okay. so you will expect that you lose some you win some yes. to that extent you will only try to gain more mm -hmm. uh, but directly uh, answering your question the fact is all of us know our infrastructure challenge mm -hmm. i mean in order for you to be able to trade with another country you have your products going to displace the product that are already existing in that market which means that you have to be price competitive essentially. So if you operate from a high cost environment like we are doing, it will be difficult for you to compete outside. However, every country has its own challenge. But what you need to know in an agreement is what are you expecting in the other uh, country? I mean, what are your chances of penetrating that country? And what are you expecting to enter into your country? If you are able to know all of this, you will be able to determine how to negotiate. You'll be able to determine how to enter into the agreement. What are you bringing to the table? What are you going to accept? What are you going to offer? Let's talk about consultations now. Um, I know there was a negotiator was actually put together, I think an office, to actually go around the six geopolitical zones and get views from the business community and also, I think, manufacturers. Um, what, have we, what have we heard? What, have we heard the last of that? Uh, no, I, I think the NOTN, that's the office, have done well in uh, going around the country, the geopolitical zones, to carry out uh, yes. some sensitization and yes. consultation process. To that extent, yes. Uh, it's coming late, but it's, ne it's better late than mm -hmm. never. And I think Nigerians have been able to express themselves. Man actively participated in that process. And so we're able to give a sense of what we feel about the, the agreement. Mm -hmm. However, the outcome of, of this agreement needs to be made public so that those who participated in the, in the consultation process will be able to validate it and they will know that the concerns that have been expressed yes. during this uh, consultation period are adequately taken on board in government taking its decision to either sign or not to sign. Well, but, but let's, let's, let's look at the, because I, I read something before coming on air, what the my president of MAN saying uh, that um, issues around tariff of the 90% and um, of all goods. And um, I, I, I think I need more, shed more light on that. How would that affect uh, the manufacturers? Okay, so basically what has been accepted up front, and yes. this is part of the reason why we are kicking, 
is that we are going to open up our markets 90 percent mm. of the tariff lines and then restrict 10 percent oh. so what we are saying is what is the content of this 90 percent and what is the content of this 10 percent put mm. simply however in rec uh, recently uh, as recent as i think last week uh, this has been made available. The offer that we are making has been made available to us and we are studying very carefully. You see, this is very important because you need to know all the government policies that have been put in place to support certain sectors, to protect certain sectors. We need to be guaranteed in the offers that you are making. So you don't open up those ones for any kind of attack. So that's why we are asking for offensive and defensive measures. Offensive in the sense that we will search the market. What is it that we can take out effectively and compete? And then defensive to protect the ones that we know we do not want to open up so that we can give time for those operating in the domestic uh, economy to thrive. I mean, th those are the issues. Our initial objection was based on the fact that we didn't have a clue as to what those things are. Mm -hmm. But now it's been made known as part of the consultation process. And we are in touch with the NOTN so that we'll be able to package one that will be beneficial to Nigeria. This is what you go to negotiate with. But you don't sign up up front and then negotiate later. If we come out with the fact that 10% is inadequate, what are you going to do? It's already too late. Now, one thing that many say is uh, they're looking at Nigeria and looking at the population. That is one thing that we're also guarding against, that we have been so defensive, like we know that, yes, most African countries want to get into Nigeria. Uh, we're talking about 180 million people here. Uh, uh, some people say we're getting close to 200 million now at the moment. So is that also part of the, the challenges we face or part of the reasons why we're facing this problem? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Nigeria is a manufacturer's delight. If mm. I'm a manufacturer in anywhere outside Nigeria, I want to target the Nigerian market. Apart from having the population, we're also a buying public. Most Nigerians buy what they like, not necessarily what they need. And that's uh, a manufacturer's delight. So this is the market. Even third countries, countries not in West Africa or Africa, target Nigeria. And so we are, we are worried, you know, that if we do not negotiate these processes well, especially mm -hmm. the rule of origin, we might have infiltration from these other yes. uh, economies that are uh, cost effective, more cost effective. They operate from low cost environment and they are more sophisticated. So if they infiltrate the continent, so to say, they will be able to get in their goods into Nigeria and compete unfairly with domestic industries. Mm. Let's look at manufacturers now, generally now, which is something that is an opportunity you are here. We're supposed to talk about this. Talking about them even moving out of the country. At a particular time, there was this manufacturers moving out because of challenges of logistics, capital, infrastructure. How has it been? How are manufacturers coping, your members? How did, have they been coping with the present environment, despite all efforts by government mm. to, to, to stabilize the economy? Yes, I mean, the environment is tough. Uh, but it I is, must admit that government, especially with the ease of doing business and the vigorous pursuit of the economic recovery and growth plan, we've uh, made some headways. However, we still operate in an environment that is high cost. You cannot borrow uh, uh, effectively uh, such that you'll be able to manufacture and make uh, profit. There are also infrastructure challenges. And just, but like I said, every economy has its own, own, own challenge. It just uh, behoves the government to look critically at what it can offer to look critically at those measures that it needs to take to prepare its domestic economy to be able to compete and to be able to trade, to be able to absorb what is coming from outside. We are even concerned that some of these laudable government policies that have been put in place are likely to suffer if we do not have a well-negotiated yeah, agreement. agreement. For those sectors that have been uh, recognized that we have comparative and competitive advantage, we need to nurture those sectors. And so you cannot go and sign any agreement that is going to jeopardize the progress that you are making and the future of such uh, uh, policies. Exactly, but something comes to my mind, which I, 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 talking about competitive, competitive, for us to be competitive with what we produce and um, make it exportable, we also need to meet standards. How has it been talking about standards? I know some, I've seen some packaged foods now from some manufacturers here. You know, what, what is really happening with packaging and standards? 
Well, I think we are improving uh, in the standards of our products. We have the regulatory agencies that enforce standards. And so those uh, are our members, I can only speak for my members. Okay, yeah, those exactly. of our members, yes, yes. yes that manufacturers are manufacturers. Are most yes. yes. So they make good products and they meet standards. Otherwise, one, you won't even be registered with mm -hmm. us because we require you to have all these regulatory agencies um, certifying that, that you are okay. However, you have people producing in the fringe and those ones need to improve on their quality. I'm not saying that uh, you, you, you don't ever have the best of the qualities that you have. You have to continuously improve. But you actually need also to patronize products that are made in Nigeria in order for them to continuously improve. And when you want to export to other countries, you need to be cost competitive. Like you said, you also need to have your products meeting, meeting the standard. That's why Nigerian standards are generally international standards that are acceptable. And I must commend uh, Son, Son, NAVDAC, and, yeah. and the rest of them because they are working with us in unison to be able to agree on those standards that one will be able to meet and that is safe and that uh, people will be proud of. As, 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 as we round up this, uh, I'm looking at moving forward now because um, I think we will still, government might still be pushing one way or the other and maybe the negotiator too, that office might still be pushing for this. What do we get right before we now finally maybe say, okay, we are ready to come in mm -hmm. to this agreement? What do we need to do right? Okay, essentially, uh, like I said, we are not really against Nigeria signing, yes. but we need to put our best foot forward. One, we need to be able to have a study that will show us what we need to do to be able to prosper mm -hmm. under an EFCFTA. That means we need an offensive and a defensive strategy, which will be revealed by a study. We also need to have measures that will be able to mitigate against possible negative impact. Those are measures that will enable you to identify which sectors will be negatively impacted and now take measures that would ameliorate this. Maybe if workers are going to be displaced, what are you going to retrain them? Or are you going to give incentive to, for them to move into other areas and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of work that we are doing. And I must say that we are now in touch with the NOTN and relevant government agencies in order for us to package an agreement that Nigerians will be proud of, that will allow Nigeria to take its rightful place in the continent of Africa and allow us to prosper. I mean, this is the objective continentally. And I think nobody should begrudge Nigeria for asking that we need to take our time to do the right thing. Really, we need to take our time so that it doesn't lead to job losses and all of that. The distillers yeah. were having some issues some time ago, too. Yeah. I was there at your office where you tried to explain to government. We don't even heard anything about that. Is there any update on that? <laughs> yes, we were also at the National Assembly, and happily, we are in touch with the Minister of Finance. Great. We are now looking for a way to be able to ameliorate the, the, those challenges. I just hope that the, the ministry keeps at it, and we are looking forward to an amicable resolution of the issues. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, I really had to. Director General, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kadri, thank you very much for joining us on Business Nigeria today. It's great to really have you on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to All be right here. Then.